everyone this is Nia and today I'm going to paint a garden shed I think this was requested by someone a while ago I am sorry I can't really remember who but I remember getting a suggestion painting something garden or farm related so here it is I based this painting on a couple of images I found in this composition I love the complementary colors of the green surrounding the red textured background and I also love the line of plants sitting on top of the bench. As for this next one, I like how neatly the tools are placed so I'm going to refer to things that I like here like the glove, shovel, rake and I tried to combine the features that I like from both pictures to fit into the minimal space that I have on my A6 sketchbook. There are quite a lot of elements in this picture so if I place them as thumbnails here it'd be too small for you to see so I'll just link the images in my description box or you can take screenshots from the pictures I showed you before. I just basically take the overall idea or inspiration without really copying every single element of this picture. This way I can be more flexible with my composition and make the painting my own. As I mentioned before, I really like the line of plants or cans or buckets on the bench. I already know that I want to include that bench and a bunch of plants. So after drawing out the bench, I just draw out my own set of plants in my own set of planters. And this is something that you can customize with your own paintings as well. I like the shovel and the rake lined on the wall for one of the reference images. I find that this gives the composition more structure from the long lines, so I want to include it for my own composition. For this painting, prior to sketching it out here, I made tiny thumbnails to figure out the composition prior to this, but I didn't really specify each gardening tool that I wanted to include. So even as I'm sketching this now, I'm still trying to guess around and trying to find something that works. As you can see when I'm sketching, I'm just mapping out elements but still trying to figure things out. My lines are very light and it's not neat at all but I just try to get the job done as simple and quick as possible so it's not going to waste too much time if I ever need to reposition certain elements because I didn't spend too much on one thing. I understand that a lot of people can get excited over drawing or painting small details but at the stage of the sketch that's where I want to avoid adding too much detail for the same reason. This is a perfect example actually. Here I want to include the gloves hanging on the circular hanger which I think looks really cute but because I've placed the bench too high up I've taken up too much space and it's making the tools look more cluttered. At the beginning, I was thinking of adding more pots underneath the bench on the ground, so I thought that I needed extra space. But now, as I've seen more of the composition, I'm going to prioritize the tools hung on the wall. So I have to erase the whole bench, including the planters and the plants that I've drawn out, in order to give more space at the top. Now that the tools at the top look a bit more organized, I can actually estimate the amount of space I need on top of the bench and because now I have a better imagery of how the whole piece will look like, I'm going to make my lines a bit neater as I'm sketching the pots and plants on the bench. I'm also going to do this for the top section as well and clean out the lines for the rest of the sketch to get it ready for me before I paint. Here I'm getting a bit more detailed with how the hangers look and I also want to make sure that the lines are much cleaner so it's a bit easier to color in later. I want to make sure that the plots are more or less positioned correctly with good enough symmetry and things like that and I also want to make sure that the lines for the tools are easy enough to follow. For the rack here, I decided that I want to change out the layout slightly and you can still do minor adjustments like this one at this point before you paint it so make sure that you like your sketch before painting.
I think this is good enough for the sketch since I'm going to paint this loosely, but next before we paint, here are the colors that I'll be using. Firstly, this is Aquarius Green by Roman Schmal, followed with Viridian by Holbein, Hansa Yellow Medium by Daniel Smith, New Gamboge by Daniel Smith, Indigo by Schminka, Compost Blue by Holbein, Cobalt Violet Light by Holbein, Quinn Red by Daniel Smith, Naphthal Red by Amgram, Sepia by Holbein, Gold Brown by Schminka, Buff Titanium by Daniel Smith, and I'm also going to be using Bleed Proof White by Dr. PH Martins. I'm going to start by painting the plants first. I use a mixture of Hansa Yellow Medium with Aquarius Green. I first use a thick consistency for the bottom left to make it a bit darker and I thinned out the consistency for the right hand side so the left looks like it has a bit of shadow to create the round form of this plant. For the shorter plants on the right hand side, I used a mixture of Viridian, Hansa Yellow and a little bit of Indigo just to create a different type of green and I'm only placing this at the bottom left side just like before and then I used the previous mixture of Aquarius Green with Hansa Yellow to paint the lighter green for the top section. For both these plants, I just basically dot them around using the tip of my brush and I also left out some white negative space so the plants doesn't look too bulky and here I also added indigo to darken the green to enhance the round form. For this next one, I used whatever green mix I had on my palette and I just wiggled my brush to get different texture for the cascading leaves. As for the plant at the top, this one is super simple. I just painted lines from the pot outwards. And these are just the types of plants that I've chosen to include, but you can also include different ones as well. To darken the green mixes, you can either add indigo or sepia in your mixture or even both. And you can do this whenever you feel like the plants look a bit flat. I'd like to add it on for a bit of shadow and added interest. For the pots, I've included terracotta pots as well as cans in my drawing. So for the terracotta planters, I use the colors gold brown, hansa yellow, and quin red. And if I want to lighten it, I would add a little bit of buff titanium. But just like my other paintings that I've done, I don't tend to like using exact same color tones. So I like to vary the ratio in order to get different types of terracotta pot colors. As for the wood, I basically use the same base mixture as what I use for the terracotta planters, but I just add more hands yellow and gold brown to make the color a bit more yellowish than orangey. And to darken the brown, I just like to add sepia in the mix. For the can planter or buckets in my painting, I mix up gray using indigo and sepia, and I use a very watered down consistency in order to create a light gray. Just like the color of the plants that I've done so far, I like to paint the left side of the bucket a bit darker and the top section as well to separate the shapes and also depict the same light source as the rest of the painting. For a bit of added detail, I like to add a couple of lines to the bucket and I use orange to paint something that could be like a label to the can planter as well. But after seeing this, I don't actually like it. I think that it'll look nicer as just a gray or silver can, but you can choose to do whatever you like for yours. For the handle on the shovel and the rake, I used the same color mixture for the wood but because I want this to be a bit lighter, I added a lot of buff titanium so it has more of that in the ratio. But I think from here you get what I mean and how I mix my colors. And basically the rest of the items or elements here in this painting require more or less the same mixtures. Either the greens for the plants, greys for can textures, and oranges or browns for the wood and terracotta. So I'm just going to color in the rest of the gardening tools here and I'm going to get back to you when I feel like there's going to be a slight change in color to inform you of the differences. For the stack of pots, because they're all the same color, I like to add sepia to the terracotta mix in between each pot so I can separate them with the darker shadows underneath and paint the rest with the same terracotta mix.
For the back of seats, I'm just going to paint the base color using buff titanium in a light consistency and I'm just going to leave this to dry while I paint all the other elements and then go back to the pack of seats later to add on the details or the pictures for the design of the packet. For these small tools, I decided to use a gray mix to paint the handle using the mix of sepia and indigo, but I used more sepia in the mix this time so the color is warmer. You can also do bright hues like greens, oranges, but since I already know what I want the color of the wall to be and I want it to be bright red and textured, I want the color of the tools and the pots and plants to be fairly neutral so it doesn't fight with the background color later on. For the plain cans, I like to add a couple of lines for added design or sometimes cans tend to have those rims. So I'm just going to add that on using a medium consistency of the gray mixture. For these pegs, I just use gold brown by itself because I want the brown to be fairly dark against the buff titanium base of the packets. I use the same terracotta mix for the gloves, but just like the other elements, you can pick brighter hues if you want, but I just want to keep mine simple and neutral. After this, I feel like I'm pretty much done with most of the tools, so now I'm going to paint the surrounding elements. I'm going to start by painting the grass at the bottom. I just added hands of yellow to the green pile that I had on my palette already because I want the green to be more of a yellow green as the first layer and build it up from there. So if you don't have the same green, you can just either choose if you want to make the yellow green from Hansa Yellow and Aquarius Green or Hansa Yellow and Viridian. It's completely up to you. That will just change the tone slightly. Some of the colors will fade after it dries. You can always go back to them again to either build on the shadows or the clarity of the edges or even just add another layer to give more vibrancy to the color. I tend to use a thicker consistency of the similar color mixtures of whatever I'm painting on top of and you can always do these types of adjustments along the way. So next I'm going to be painting the leaves which is going to frame the tools. For this I start with the yellow green mix from whichever green you want to choose as your base. For more muted tone you can go with Aquarius green but if you want a brighter green you can use Viridian as the base green with Hansi Yellow. For the shape of the leaves I really like the shape of the leaves from the reference image which I figured is more or less like the shape of a maple leaf. So it has three basic leaf shapes joined together at one point with a couple of smaller ones near the stem or where the leaf is connected to the stem. As you can see the leaves that I'm painting here is not even that neat but as long as we repeat the shape enough I think that our eyes will be able to adjust and more or less understand the shape. I'm just scattering the leaves around the tools while leaving a bit of space in between each leaf with the first light green color but once they're completely dry I use a dark green by adding either indigo or sepia or even both to the green mix that you've chosen and I'm using this dark green to paint underneath the leaves that I've already painted while still playing with the angles so the leaves look more naturally placed. Next I'm going to be painting the red wall. For this I'm starting out with more of a muted red as the base color first. So I mix gold brown naphthol red with a little bit of indigo together and use a medium consistency to paint the textured red background. The naphthol red that I use is very staining so once I place it down it doesn't spread out as nicely which made the paint look a bit more spludgy and uneven. However, I'm just going to take advantage of this and only paint vertically to follow the wooden planks or the texture of the wooden planks for the background according to the reference image and I just paint really carefully around the plants and the gardening tools. For the plants, I try to paint them following the texture so as an example for the round plant, I wouldn't just paint a red circle surrounding it and so on. You can see that some of the reds are a bit darker, some are lighter. I still don't mind at this point since I'm going to be layering on more of the red later on anyway. 
I am also only painting this until I reach the leaves framing the wall because I want the leaves to be a bit more dense around the edges. As for the bottom of the bench, since the light is coming from the top right, I made the red a bit darker by adding more indigo in the mixture but as I get towards the right hand side, I just use a bit more naphtha red so it goes from a more cooler red to a warmer red but in a thicker consistency. Next, I'm going to be layering on the shadows. I use a mix of Nuffle Red with Sepia in a thick consistency, and I'm going to just paint the bottom as well as the left side of every object around the wall with this color mixture. Then I'm going to soften the edges with a clean damp brush. I'm also going to paint underneath the leaves using the same color mixture but I use a slightly thinner consistency so I can spread it down further and the dark red won't be too strong. Next I want to build the vibrancy of the wall so I use Nuffle Red by itself in a medium consistency and paint on vertical lines but I'm not looking to cover every single area here so the added layer will still look textured. After layering on the Nuffle Red, the dark red is no longer visible enough against the vibrancy of the red so I'm going to layer on the dark red again using a mixture of sepia and nuffle red in a thick consistency and build on the value of this painting. Here I also decided to layer on the inside leg of the bench using the same dark red mix and a medium consistency to glaze over the previous layer. The red area is fairly wet now so I'm going to work on the leaves. I'm just going to fill in the rest of the area with the same yellow green mix and paint right at the edge in a thin to medium consistency and I'm going to use the dark green mixture to paint the bottom of the grass. I want a vignette effect so I'm only using the darkest green on the corners and following up the middle section with a mixture of Aquarius green and Hansa yellow. Now going back to the hanging leaves, I'm using the same dark green mix from Aquarius Green with Indigo and Sepia to layer on the color for the left section of the composition in a thin consistency as well as the bottom left while leaving the top right section lighter than the rest. After that, I just lined the elements I painted using my Sakura Micron pen but before I did this, I made sure that the paper is completely dry first so the ink from your pen won't bleed out and spread on your paper. After this, I want to add details to the seed packets. I just do wiggly lines to suggest text, then I add squares where I can paint on the photos of what type of seeds they are. For the image, I use bright colors and I've chosen New Gamboge for yellow, Compost Blue for the blue and Cobalt Violet Light, all in a thick consistency to paint tiny little flowers, followed with either the dark green or light green for the surrounding color. After this, I want to paint on flowers for the plants. I use bleed proof white because it's nice and opaque and I'm just going to make tiny little white flowers for the shorter plants and just white dots for the round plant. You can keep all the flowers white but I want to incorporate different hues so I use New Gamboge to paint on top of the white flowers and I'm going to use compost blue to paint the one next to it. 
While working on the plants on the bench, I'm also going to build on the value with the query screen and indigo to paint on the darker areas for the cascading plant. And I also add tiny little leaf shapes to make the plant look less abstract. I want to build on the values for the grass area to make sure that it's as vibrant as the red on the wall. So I use the same dark green mix to paint on some grass and I also darken the bottom corners to enhance the vignette. For the right hand side though, I added more yellow and green instead of the indigo so it's a bit lighter than the left side. Then I'm going to break the bulkiness of the dark green by adding the yellow green mix to the blue proof white to make the color a bit more opaque and paint it on top of the darker areas and do the same for the lighter areas using the dark green as well. I feel like I have good density of grass here so I just want to add tiny little shadows for the pots using the orange brown mix and a thick consistency to paint under the plants and also darken the left side of the pot. For the grays in the painting, I use the same mixture in a medium consistency to layer on the shadows on the left and the bottom side of the objects. As for the wood bench or hangers, if I feel like I need to increase the vibrancy, I'll just glaze over the same color as well. I'm going to add white wildflowers for the grass as well to break the amount of green at the bottom using bleed proof white. Then after that, I also want to increase the intensity of the dark green for the cascading leaf frame. So I added more dark green and glazed more yellow green on the right corner. Just like the grass before, I'll use the yellow green mix with added bleep proof white to paint on lighter leaves on top of the dark green glaze. And I'll also add darker leaves on top of the light yellow green glaze on the right hand side. I also like to add more leaves on the red wall using the light green color with added bleep proof white so the frame of the leaves look a bit softer and less bulky. And with Aquarius Green and Sepia, I use a thick consistency with my small brush to paint on some vines around the leaves. Here I use Bleed Proof White to add on highlights to the objects and the pots, and I also use a dry brush consistency to add wooden textures to the bench and wooden handles of the rake and shovels. For the final touch-up, I'm going to separate the planks of redwood using my ink pen again. So I just draw vertical lines from the top to the bottom of the red areas, making sure that the width is more or less even. Then after that, I'm going to follow this up using my bleed proof white to line the vertical lines again for added definition. At the end, I also ended up adding wooden textures with my bleed proof white on the wooden planks and then I soften it by glazing a light consistency of naphthal red over it. But this is optional, it's just for added texture. But anyway, this is the completed painting. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!